Well, I've got the carriage positioned where I want it, and I locked it. And when you lock your carriage, always leave your tool post wrench on there, and it just uh, signifies that you got it locked so you don't forget. And uh, we're going to do our feeding with a compound, because I'm going to zoom in in a moment. You're not going to see uh, these other controls. We're set at about 500 RPM. Now, this is going to be an interrupted cut. So, safety glasses or a safety shield, of course, that's always a necessity, but even more so when you got an interrupted cut because the chips can really fly. All right, let's take our first pass, and then we're going to take a series of passes, uh, feeding with the uh, compound, and then on, on each pass you will need to feed your uh, cross feed in a little bit. starting to form. I turn that up to 800. Feed in oh, 50 thousandths is what it was. I'm going to take even a deeper cut this time to see how it handles it. These are roughing cuts. When you get down to where the point starts to form, then we're going to uh, feed slowly with a light. Uh, uh, light cut. I'm using two hands on my compound so that I can get a uh, continuous feed rather than a jerky feed. This is not a power feed. This is a hand feed. Most small lays, I should say all small lays, do not have a power feed on the compound. I think some of the larger ones, big industrial lays, might have that. I recall, I think, a Cincinnati that I worked on one time that had a, a power compound. Yeah, I'm feeding in a half a revolution right now with my uh, cross feed on each cut. Tool is nice and sharp. Sure you're on center because at some point the uh, the work might uh, <clears throat> ride up on top of the tool and bend or break the tool. Taking a slightly lighter uh, depth of cut this time. We're almost into a point, and you don't want a real sharp point, because then when you drop the thing, it's going to bend. This is just mild steel. We're not going to heat treat it. Mild steel cannot be heat treated other than carburizing or case hardening, and that wouldn't do any good. because the tool is dull or you lack rigidity in your uh, 
tool holder or your lathe or you got slop uh, in, the, in the compound, you shouldn't need to file it. There's just a little bit of a flat on the end of the on the point. I'm going to leave it at that. Zoom in if I can. Just a little bit of a, a flat there, and that's just fine with me. Now, if you should want to run a little emery cloth across there while it's still in the lathe, you could. You can. A little bit of rust on that stock. That could be taken off with emery cloth later on. I'm done on the lathe with uh, the body of the plumb box. Okay, now we'll turn our attention to the bolt. I started with a 3 8 uh, 16 hex bolt, and it's one inch long. And I uh, sawed it off so it's only about half inch long. Just did that in the bench vise. And, and uh, I held it by the part that I was going to throw away so I didn't worry about damaging the thread. Now, I didn't happen to have a, a bolt of the right length. Now, we need to hold it in the three-jaw chuck, and there's two ways of doing that. One is to just hold it by the threads, but sometimes you damage the thread. Another way is to uh, put another uh, hex nut on there, and you're, uh, you're chucking it on uh, both the nut and the head at the same time. Should center it pretty well and now we're going to center drill it with a number two center drill and we're going to drill it 330 seconds all the way through. Be careful you don't break that little center drill off. This is fun isn't it? Okay, we'll put the 332nd in. Now when you drill these small holes, small diameter holes, feed it slowly. I guarantee you to break it off. Back it out often. Clear the chips. And to add more earl. It's a nice sharp bit. Okay, and we're all the way through. All right, we're just about done here. Let me show you a few final steps. Uh, if you want to, to clean up the body here, just put some uh, emery cloth on a, a flat surface and uh, you can polish it just a little bit like that. I wouldn't put it on the disc sander or the belt sander for that. that that's all you need. I did uh, give this a couple strokes of file with a file on, while I was on the lathe. Uh, there's an alternate here where you may want to make the uh, taper just a little bit longer than what I got here by changing the angle. I had two different commercially made ones here and they were uh, the taper is slightly different which I didn't realize till I was using the protractor a few minutes ago and then it temporarily short circuited my mind. Be sure and wear your safety glasses when you do all this. I know I'm going to get some notes from the safety Nazis on this, but uh, we just need to be careful when we're working in the shop on power tools. On this commercially made one, they dealt with uh, getting the screw in flush by a little undercut right there. That can be done too, but I, I dealt with it with the counterbore method. Now as far as the bolt here, I did take a, a countersink and I countersunk both ends a little bit just by hand with this to remove the burrs and uh, the sharp corner so it wouldn't cut the, the uh, string and then I got uh, I put a piece of string in there, mason string and this should screw all the way down flush now. 
and it does. And there we are. You know, I've got a friend who collects antique tools, and he has uh, quite a collection of uh, plumb bobs, uh, highly ornate ones that are uh, 100 or more years old. Some of them might be 200 years old. Some of them uh, quite valuable, made of brass and other uh, rare metals. Uh, brass, I guess, is rare now. And he's got them tastefully displayed in a beautiful tall cabinet with uh, a mirror in the back, and they're all hanging from monofilament line and, and uh, they're backlit and the mirror makes it look like there's many more in there than what there is and uh, so they were a thing of the beauty uh, of, of beauty years ago and uh, many men do collect them and some of them command a rather high price but uh, this is strictly a utilitarian one hope you enjoyed this little demonstration guys comments are welcome uh, please no questions I'm uh, just overwhelmed with with questions I just can't take the time to answer all of them there's just just too many so uh, this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.